It's good to see everyone here today, especially some of you we haven't seen in a while and are visiting on this special day at West Sub. I think uh, Tim and Deanne Abbott are here. I see uh, Bob and Laura Speziel are here. And I can't see anybody else, so Dream of White's here somewhere. Yeah. Thank you for being here to celebrate with us on this special day. We have been studying the book of Jonah in the Old Testament on Sunday mornings, but this Sunday we're going to break away to focus on this special occasion in the life of our church. Uh, if you'd like to see a sermon outline or borrow a Bible, our ushers will be help you to help you right now. You know, there are certain things that happen in our lives and in the life of the church that call for special times of praise and thanksgiving, and this is one of them. Over 25 years ago, we were outgrowing our church building, which was filled to capacity. Sunday school classes were meeting in homes. Our potlucks were held in the main auditorium that we had. So after much prayer, uh, we began a new building program and a new building fund. I think um, after a couple, three years, we had a total of $60,000, I remember, in the building fund. Some of you remember that. In all honesty, the several million dollars we needed to build a new facility seemed absolutely impossible for our little church. But in 2001, after much prayer and planning, 35 families at the time in that church, in this church, pledged to give sacrificially $1.5 million over three years, half the amount we needed. The money did come in, and we took out a loan for the other half, and everyone pitched in to help build the new facility. At the beginning of this year, we had $290,000 left on our loan. And a few months ago, God provided all the money we needed to pay off the loan completely through the the generosity of people right here at West Sub. So thank you to those who gave so generously, sacrificially. And we want to praise God and thank him for this wonderful provision um, for us, the body of Christ at West Sub. And to help us do that this morning, I'd like to look at Psalm 105, which is a song of praise. And keep in mind, right after this service, we're going to continue outside with what I've termed a mortgage burning ceremony. Trust me, I'm not, it's not going to be an hour. It's going to be very brief because the luncheon to follow. So uh, please, those of you who want to, come out and join us for that. Uh, I'll explain more about that in a minute. But for now, uh, as we focus on praising God, please turn in your hymn book to number 105. Oh, I mean the Bible's hymn book, Psalm 105. Psalm 105. Let me just read the first few verses. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, speak of all his wonders, glory in his holy name. Let the heart of those who seek the Lord be glad. Seek the Lord in his strength, seek his face continually. Remember his wonders, which he has done, his marvels and the judgment uttered by his mouth. O seed of Abraham, his servant, O sons of Jacob, his chosen ones, he is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He has remembered his covenant forever, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations. The Psalms, as you know, are God-inspired songs. Psalms were the songs Jesus sang. And he often quoted from them in his teaching. 
And many of the psalms are what we call praise psalms. This is one of them. The psalms really do help us understand what it means to praise God. The Hebrew word for praise is the word hallel. Uh, I've talked about this before, but it means to boast in something. It means to shine a light on something that we really love and admire. And when you apply this to God, it's to call attention to something we see and admire about God. But genuine praise is more than an acknowledgement of what we admire or just saying or singing the words, praise the Lord. It's more than that. Genuine praise goes much deeper in our heart and soul. Genuine praise not only expresses adoration, it also involves something that we actually experience in our heart. Uh, and something we take pleasure in God. In his book on the psalm, C.S. Lewis talks about what is at the heart of why we praise anything. I think it was very helpful to look at this. He says, think of, think of your response to something you see or hear that's absolutely astoundingly beautiful in, in sight or hearing. could be a piece of art could be a piece of music or a moving performance, could be a breathtaking landscape. What do we do? We take it in. It fills our senses in a sense. We stand back and love what we see or hear for its own sake, just for being what it is. Why? Because it's absolutely beautiful. We praise something because of its innate beauty, wonder, and excellence. We praise it just for what it is. When it touches something deep within us, what happens? We see something beautiful, wonderful, absolutely astoundingly great. It touches something deep and we take it in. We just have to acknowledge it. <laughs> it's beautiful. We have to say something and do something to respond to something that moves us that deeply. That's praise. It's the same when it comes to praising God. When we see, when we really get it, how beautiful, majestic, wonderful he really is, and let it captivate us and move us, it, we can't help it. We, must, we have to praise him. So, what has touched you deeply about who God is? Praise happens when we begin to take in God's beauty, his excellence, his purity, his power, his holiness, and his great love or faithfulness to us. Take it in our minds and hearts and we relish in it. We take pleasure in it we realize that God's incomparable. He's unfathomable. There's no one like him. In the depths of his love toward us, the scripture actually says, surpasses our ability to really understand. <laughs> it's so great. When it comes to God, everything he is exceeds everything else that is beautiful, lovely, wonderful, pure, and excellent. Everything. For us and the psalmist, this is what we'll focus on, what the psalmist focuses on. For the psalmist, for us, God's beauty, his majesty, his excellence, his holiness, his love can be seen in the things he does. <laughs> Look at what he did. His wonderful acts. The occasion for Psalm 105 was to celebrate a really milestone in Israel's history under King David. Um, they were celebrating the return of the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem in, to be back in the tabernacle. Now, remember, the Ark of the Covenant, we've talked about this before, was where God's presence, his glory, dwelt in the midst of his people Israel in the Holy of Holies, in the Ark of the Covenant. 
At one point, the Ark of the Covenant <clears throat> was taken by Israel's enemies, the Philistines. And there was great mourning in Israel. It's like God was saying, I'm, I've left you, you're, you're not following me. But then God miraculously, miraculously brought it back to Israel. And King David <laughs> led the ark in procession back into Jerusalem, and he was so moved with joy. He danced, he sang, and praised God. Their celebration was amazing. We see the account in 1 Chronicles 16. But to help them celebrate this event, monumental. It's by saying, God, I'm, God's saying, I'm coming back. I'm going to be with you. The ark is coming back. To help them celebrate the return of the ark into Jerusalem, David asked, Israel's musicians to write a song of praise and thanksgiving to the Lord. And Psalm 105 is that song. The focus of Psalm 105 is praising the breathtaking beauty, power, majesty, and holiness of the Lord as they saw them in his wonderful acts toward them. They just could see his hand at work in the history of them being the people of God. And Psalm 105 takes us through that. The wonders of his acts. To celebrate the return of God's presence to them in the Ark of the Covenant, Psalm 105 rehearses the wonder of how God made Israel his people. And that's how it, we, we see at the start of this, Psalm 105, verses 5 to 7, he, it, the, 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 the exhortation is, remember, remember his wonders which he's done, his marvels, his judgments uttered by his mouth, O seed of Abraham, his servant, O sons of Jacob, his chosen ones. He's the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. Another way to look at that is his acts. We've seen it. How could we not conclude how great he is? As they think through their own history, this is what the psalm does. They see, and this is why they're, it's why it's a song of praise. They see that what has happened to them as a people from the very beginning is absolutely miraculous and wonderful. Notice, as you go through the psalm, I'm going to go through it in the slides, that God is the subject of the actions taking place in their history. Psalm 105, 8 to 44. Quickly go through it. Verse 8. God, he remembered his covenant with Abraham. Verse 10. He confirmed it with Jacob. Verse 14. He permitted no man to oppress them. He reproved kings for their sake. Verse 16. He called for a famine in the land. Verse 17, he sent Joseph before them, sold as a slave. Verse 24, he caused the people to become very fruitful in Egypt. 25, he turned the heart of the Egyptians to hate his people. Verse 26, he sent his servant Moses and Aaron to perform signs and wonders in Egypt. Verses 28 to 36, he brought the ten plagues on Egypt. Verse 37, he brought them out of Egypt with silver and gold. Verse 39, he spread a cloud for their covering and a pillar of fire by night. Verse 40, he brought them quail, satisfied them with the bread of heaven. Verse 41, he opened a rock for them and water flowed out. Verse 42, he remembered his holy word to Abraham and brought them out with joy. He gave them the lands of the Gentiles. He did all this. Let's remember that, folks. He did it. That's... The point of this psalm. That's why they want to praise him. They can't escape the fact they are a people because of him. They didn't conjure all this stuff up. He led them. He made them a people. As unlikely as all of it was, 
as many obstacles and hardships they faced, in spite of all their rebellion through the years, God kept his promise and made it happen. And they are absolutely ecstatic. They're remembering this. It's all God. (laughs) What wonderful acts he's done. Breathtaking. He did all that for them. And uh, interesting, we, uh, we serve and worship the same God. <laughs> Remember that. In 1993, the year I came, it was becoming painfully clear that we needed a new church building. We were renting Churchville Junior High and meeting in homes for Sunday school classes. We'd have no room. There's no really office space or meeting fellowship area. Sometimes visiting families in the church would be asked to split up because they couldn't seat them all together. Just ask Bob Spaziel, head usher. And Bob, who's here today, was reminding us all, would you please move in and let other people in to the row? Honestly, it became... (laughs) We realized what was happening was most people actually felt inhibited from inviting anybody to church because there wasn't any room. Now, that's not a good thing. So I'm telling you, a vision was born for a new building that would better help us serve Christ in this community. We broke ground for the new building in April of 2003, held our first service in here June 13, 2004. The amazing thing about it all, those of you who were here and remember, the body, the body of Christ at West Sub not only committed to the vision financially, sacrificially, generously, Many sacrificed their time and effort to build this building. We had almost 100% of the people at West Sub volunteering in different areas uh, and helped us save hundreds of thousands of dollars in building costs in the included electrical, plumbing, carpentry, drywall, painting, wiring, flooring, cleanup, making meals, and a host of other things. And I'm telling you, it may sound like we did it. We didn't. <laughs> God did it. We, um, re- we are witnesses to God's miraculous and wonderful acts in our own church's history. We could write a psalm. 105B. We are witnesses the people he's brought to faith in Jesus here, the people that whom God has changed here to become disciples of Jesus, the children who were taught here, the people he has healed here, the people he's brought through trials and persevered through them here, the missionaries and ministers we've sent out from here, the beautiful facility that we're enjoying, he provided for us. I can't explain it any other way. I cannot. We're too small. This shouldn't have happened. Um, I'm going to refer to this later, but I want to read it to you now from Psalm 105 because I think this this is uh, resonates with me a little bit. Um, Talking about Israel's history, giving them the land of Canaan, verse 11 and verse 12, it says, when they were only a few men in number, very few strangers in it, wandering, he made all of this happen. You know why God does that? He really loves to take the least likely the fewest, re- with the fewest resources, and just magnify himself. 
Watch what I can do. And that's what he did here. I really believe it. Now, what I want you to do, have a little fun here. Uh, take a look at what God has done in giving us this wonderful place of worship uh, as he replaced the old with the new. You're going to see the old situation first and then breaking into the new. All people right here, part of West Sub's church family. God's miraculous, wonderful acts tells us that God himself is beautiful, wonderful, worthy of praise. We are witnesses that nothing is impossible with God. So today, it is fitting we celebrate this. We too have become part of God's redemptive history through our faith in his son, Jesus. Think about how impossible it was for God to become human. Think about how unlikely for God, the judge of all, to take our judgment on himself. (laughs) Think of how amazing God's grace toward us is in Jesus Christ and how awesome it is for us to experience the forgiveness of sin and the gift of eternal life. Isn't he wonderful? Isn't he beautiful? Let it in. Let him in. It's one thing to think about these truths. It's another thing to actually experience them. But I should say, experience Him. You can only know how amazing God is when you let Him in by believing in Jesus Christ as your Savior. And if you've never done that, I invite you to do it as I close in prayer right now. Open your heart. Say, to Jesus, I believe in you. You rose from the dead. You died for my sin. I invite you into my life. Let's pray. Father, thank you today for your marvelous works, which we are here have witnessed in our lives and the life of this church. I thank you for the many, many people who uh, worked and sacrificed uh, in in obedience to you, really, to, to help build this facility, which we pray will continue to be a light of the gospel and of Jesus in this community. We commit again to this to you and our time of worship as we continue. In Jesus' name, amen.